So right now we live streamed and I'm sorry that we are not in the same uh, stream link as we planned to be in, but I'm sure that in mind team will fix it very soon and uh, will inform all the people that are waiting on another link uh, to join us here uh, because we had a small tech problem that occurred. Uh, probably Zoom had uh, reinstalled or whatever else. I don't know what has happened. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, let's do this make uh, pitching session really good. Uh, I greet all the investors and founders here. Uh, we will try to be uh, in time uh, today and uh, as usually, let's start with uh, introductions from investor side. Uh, majority of investors joining us today, they are good friends at in mind and uh, very often guests. So let me first introduce Rick Sachs. <laughs> Sorry, evening, Wednesday evening, but it's already feels like Friday night. 369 Capital, and we have two co-founders, Jonathan and Fyodor. Hi, hey Jonathan. Guys. Hi, hi. I just came back home from the gym, so it's still. But um, yeah, happy to be here, guys. Uh, 369 Capital, uh, we started operating early last year. Um, most, of the, most of the team members have been in the space for much longer, uh, 2016, 2017. Um, with 369, uh, we um, try to be chain agnostic, um, very flexible in, in terms of the verticals that we invested in. So we did a lot of um metaverse nft gaming infrastructure in the past uh we're looking into a lot of defi uh, a lot of of uh, l2 things um but um yeah we think there's uh, there's talent in every vertical of this market and uh we're here to uh see if we can find some on this on this pitching session so happy to uh be here happy to see you here jonathan uh yeah. especially considering that on the last session you could not join so very yeah, very good to see you again thanks okay. a lot Thank you. And uh, now, Joe from Stratified Capital. Joe, would you like to say a couple of words about Stratified Capital focus in 2023? Oh, sure. So uh, we are Stratified Capital, and our portfolio project covering the DeFi and Metaverse, GameFi, NFT, and also the cloud rendering for, for gaming. So I would say it's pretty diversified and covering every aspect for your growth, especially talking about GameFi. So talking about 2023, and we talk about again why we care about mainly two things. First will be the complete of the your ecosystem, and second will be the design of your economy. Let's say tokenomics or different economy among the community. So uh, projects have to think clear about how do you design your economy and your product mechanisms. So those are the things that we think critical for the five. Thank you. I love what you said. Uh, since we continue uh, educating projects about tokenomics and token economy and also uh, underlining the importance of it, for sure. Um, well, uh, thanks a lot, Joe, for joining and for this Thank short you. introduction. Matt from Blockchain Founders Fund, uh, could you remind us about BFF investment thesis uh, for 2023? Yeah. So Blockchain Founders Fund, you know, we're focused on investing in early stage companies. We've been around since 2017. I would say, you know, we are very agnostic ourselves. We made our first start in blockchain gaming. You know, our first investment was in a game called Splinterlands, which had went on to become the number one play to earn game and active daily users. Um, and today, you know, again, we're just trying to find, you know, the right founders, the right teams to come in on the early level. We don't mind being the first check in either. I'm totally comfortable with stuff like that. Seriously. Oh, I yeah. mean, <laughs> so many founders complain that investors, uh, even if they are interested uh, to get in, they are asking for lead investor. They don't want to be the first investor on, on cap table. So in your case, you are okay to be the first, right? Yeah. I mean, the, the companies that we want to invest in, we're confident that we can make other in introductions to other investors. So we're not afraid to make that first move. That's amazing. Thanks a lot, uh, Matt, for underlining this. Thank you. Welcome. And, and I want to give a word to Petra from 3X Capital. Don't mess up with 369. Petra, would you love uh, to introduce to us 3X Capital? 
Of course, of course. Thank you for invitation today. It's the first time to participating in your event. So actually in Strix Capital, we started investing in 2017. Since then, we've made 45 investments and currently our focus is on three niches. Actually, we are investing in infrastructure, uh, various layer one, layer twos and uh, scaling solutions. Also, we are uh, focusing DeFi industry, but on top of that, we are looking at various uh, Web3 startups, for example, something uh, with, with, with even NFTs or distribution with uh, ownership. So we're pretty much interested to see what uh, this event can bring to us to look at startups that we'll be presenting today. So thank you so much for this opportunity and happy to be here. Thank you, Petra, for introducing uh, 3, uh, 3X uh, Capital uh, Focus. And uh, yeah, I'm very glad uh, to greet you here. I hope you will find interesting projects. Today we have a specific focus, not DeFi and Web3 infrastructure, but more about GameFi, apps, dApps, entertainment, metaverse. Uh, and uh, yeah, I remind to investors that if you see another fund here with whom you are not in contact yet and you would love to get in touch for co-investment opportunities, also let us know. We will gladly introduce you to each other. And uh, I see that Alejandro and uh, maybe a few other colleagues from CD5 Fund have joined us today. So Alejandro, would you love to introduce to us CD5 Fund? Everyone heard of CD5 Launchpad. What CD5 Fund is doing? Hey, Nelly. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you very much for the invitation. So as you said, at CD5, uh, we are an incubator on Launchpad. So what we do is to, to help uh, raise funds uh, through the public round. So this is like uh, the help we are doing uh, as a fund. So, so far, we are incubating 18 projects. And in today's uh, call, we, we would love to, to see the projects that, that they are pitching because we are always open to, to new projects. Uh, and uh, do you invest or uh, support only gamify projects or also in complementing verticals? Gamify, AI, layer one, layer two protocols. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I see your focus has widened since 2021, I guess, right? Totally. <laughs> cool to see you here. Thanks a lot for joining. Thank you very much. Uh, Apostle from Skytail Ventures. Uh, can you give a couple of words about your focus on 2023? Sure. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, so I'm Apostle. I'm an analyst at Skytel Ventures, and we're a Polkadot-friendly uh, fund. Uh, the reason being uh, Gavin Wood and Aaron Buchanan sit on our advisory board. Uh, in terms of focus, we are sector agnostic, but we are increasingly um, interested in more game five projects. So that is one of the main reasons uh, I've decided to join this call. And once again, thank you for having me. That's amazing. Just to clarify, a Polkadot ecosystem. So, but you, you are still investing in projects. Or yes, on, on I mean, mm -hmm. we, I would say Polkadot friendly in the sense uh, due to our connections with the system, but we are again, uh, blockchain agnostic. Amazing. Thanks a lot, Apostle, for introducing this to us. And I hope you will see some interesting opportunities here today. Glad to work with you. And uh, the last but not least for today, I think, among investors, Belinda from Brink. Belinda, would you love to say a couple of words? Sure. Thanks, Nelly, for inviting me and the team for organizing this. Um, so I sit at the portfolio management uh, team at Brink, which is a global accelerator um, based in Hong Kong. Um, we started initially as a deep tech accelerator, but pivoted um, heavily into Web3. We partner with Animoca brands across our different programs, uh, and we do invest in an agnostic way. Of course, a sweet spot is, um, you know, it has always been to increase Web3 adoption. So anything building on-chain, DeFi protocols, NFTs, metaverse, um, any use cases uh, with a focus on consumer, we love it. Um, but we'd like to expand towards um, developer tools and of course, infrastructure, layer one, layer twos. Um, we, we, we're keen on that. 
Awesome. And if I remember correctly, Brink also has very good connections in Asia, right? For the projects that, that want to yeah. enter that market, right? Absolutely. So we do leverage our partners, uh, especially Animoca and Sandbox. Mm -hmm. um, Animoca is present globally. Uh, we have, uh, I mean, Animoca is in Japan, which is an amazing um, um, market for IPs, um, NFTs and Metaverse. Awesome. Belinda, thanks a lot for joining us today and keep your attention on the founders here and their pitches. So we will start with them right now. Uh, and uh, before we go on with the pitches, I want to say special thanks to Mark Nazar, our VC analyst who helped uh, to bring up this uh, session together. Uh, all of you probably heard of the news of the earthquake in Europe uh, with uh, Turkey, Syria and Lebanon uh, touched by and hurt by this earthquake. So Mark lives in Lebanon and despite this uh, all horrible situation, he managed uh, to do it. So Mark, thanks a lot, great job. Uh, I'm happy that we have such a cool team. Thanks to you, Nelly. Thanks, yes, we always take a positive energy from you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So founders, get prepared. And we are starting from your pitch, with your pitches. Uh, as usually, five minutes for the pitch. Please, please, please don't overcome this limit. And uh, then uh, Q&A with investors. Investors can ask as many questions as they want before uh, making decision to connect in private. So the first one start off from Dubai, Astrek, and the founder, Samil. Samil, ready? Uh, yes, I'm ready. Hope you all can see my screen. Oh. Yes, yes, I can oh. see your screen. So you have your five minutes. Uh, okay, perfect. So hello, everyone. I'm Samil Avitani, and the founder and CEO of Arrakis. So Arrakis is a Web3 community-driven travel platform where everyone earns money by sharing reviews, experience, and itineraries. And public could invest in the travel industry and earn regular booking commission from their holdings of airline and hotels RST. RST means revenue sharing token. So we are developing two separate apps. Uh, one is the investors app and the travelers app. So in investors app, the problem is uh, the travel industry is currently worth of $2 trillion and no normal public could invest in the travel industry. So we are developing, a, um, uh, so we are converting all the hotels in the world into an NFT and sharing the commission with the NFT holder. Let's say, Mark, you own a Hilton Hotel NFT in Dubai. So how many ever bookings made in that Hilton Hotel through our website, you get 5% of each booking's value. The same can be done in airlines. Let's say Emirates airline has a daily route from San Francisco to Dubai. People can own that route, benefit how many of bookings made in that route through our website. Uh, the owner gets 5% of each booking's value. Uh, and so this was the investment app where people uh, invest and uh, earn regular booking commission. Now I'll talk about the travel app. So in travel app, the problem is uh, on any of the travel agency you go, 40% of the bookings are non-refundable bookings, which means if customers go and cancel, uh, cancel, they lose their money. So what we are making is that we are converting all the rooms into an NFT, but we won't call it NFT. We will call it tradable rooms as we don't want to confuse our travelers. And so there are three benefits for tradable rooms. One, as I said, people could trade their rooms and not lose money. Second benefit is that uh, in the travel industry, there are lots of intermediaries like Bed Bank. And their business model is that they buy the hotel rooms at a bulk and then they give it for a profit. So I want my community to act as a bed bank and earn money by flipping rooms. And the third benefit is that other travel companies can build on top of our infrastructure. And we then secondly, we are creating an AI powered itinerary where people could, uh, uh, like, you know, a reason we are creating because uh, people, uh, uh, spend 15 to 20 hours planning their trip, uh, they will go to 15 to 20 different websites if they were planning their trip. So we are creating an itinerary where they just put the location where they are going, with whom they are going, and uh, on what date. So we will say that day one, you can do this, day two, this, day three, this, and with one click, you can book your whole journey. And so business model is that in the investment side, we will earn money when RSTs are minted, and when, uh, when uh, every time the trade happens, we get 20% royalty. 
and we will charge investors yearly maintenance fee and insurance fee as well. And on the travel side, we will earn 10% commission and which will be split between the RST holders and the suppliers have the ability to uh, advertise on our platform. So we are raising 1.5 million to scale the team and to further develop the product and a strong marketing push, which will bring us to the first 100,000 users in our first year. And this is our team. And like uh, our team is uh, has uh, industry leaders. Me, I have I personally come from a, a travel brag background, and I've worked at Quinston Chili and Ten Lifestyle, and sold roughly one million of personalized travel itineraries to ultra and high net worth people. And John is the hackathon win winner. And Peg is our Sam, uh, CMO, and uh, Radon is the senior government advisor for Abu Dhabi Tourism Fund. And uh, yes, yeah, so this is our industry leaders as our advisors. And uh, we already have partnership with Polygon as we are building our infrastructure on Polygon. We have partnership with uh, Decentraland uh, as we are going to post our virtual hotels inside their game so that people could book inside their game as well. And uh, we have partnership with few protocols and we partnership with um, uh, Intercontinent, uh, Marriott, uh, and Demac and all the local hotels. Uh, yes, yeah, so this was the full concept. And uh, the traction we've uh, we are uh, we've already been selected for plug and play accelerator in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, we have the soft commitment from uh, co-founder of uh, Cardano, Kenji Sazasaki. Uh, yes. So if this is something of interest to you, then let's give power back to the community. And uh, yes, let's create history together. Yeah. Thank you. You are perfect in time today, Samuel. Great job. And uh, yeah, I encourage investors to ask questions. Please unmute yourself and just go on. Oh, you were you all were not able to see my screens. I was. I've seen oh, okay. actually actually the first slide or the second one, and then your slideshow interrupted and we stacked on the third slide. For me, I don't know how for others. Same for me. Okay, so. Interesting because I, I saw the slides changing. Okay, maybe Samuel, can you can you drop the link uh, to your page? Uh, yes, yes, I can. I can do that. Uh, yeah, would yes. be great. And uh, please, uh, investors, do you have any questions? Alejandro, Belinda, Matt, Jonathan, Feather, Joe, Peter. Well, I just I just have like a one question about like, you know, is this system like plugging into like the back end of like some type of like, you know, travel booking POS or like how is how is this exactly like integrated and kind of like how have you kind of lowered that barrier of entry? So it's kind of easy for these like, you know, bookings relatively like around the world to, you know, be able to add this onto their you know platform. So you mean how we get the inventory of hotel rooms and airlines, right? Mm hmm. Also means because uh, like, you know, if you go on our website, it's ready. Basically what we have to do, there are two ways to get inventory. One way is like to go on hotels and airlines commercial website and apply for that. And within one week, they will give us the access to the API and we will get their inventory. And second way is that like we can go to third party, which is called Bedbank. Uh, it's the company's name, Bedbank. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, we have to apply same way and they will give you access to all the partners hotels all around the world so the, to get the inventory is very easy it's like yeah and so when you're going through like a, a third party how do you like notify them if you have now sold or transferred the nft to like a new hotel you know attend oh, okay so basically they are not involved in this because it's our commission which we have decided to share and uh, so we don't have to get involved any hotels or any third parties into it. All right. So they want because like- Let's say we are getting 15% commission. Mm -hmm. So it's we've decided that out of 15% commission, 5% we will share it to the uh, Hilton Hotel uh, RST holder. Because mm -hmm. I'm just wondering about like a situation saying, you know, it's a smaller hotel, you know, maybe uh, not in like the most developed area. And then you book the hotel and they have like a certain name, everything else information underneath it. And then you've like now sold that NFT, like someone now shows up to that property 
and they're like, okay, like you may have this NFT, but you don't have this name, everything else. Like, could that be like a possible conflict or? Uh, no, there won't be any possible conflict. Reason is that there's a there's a called a JDS system, uh, which is global distribution system. So we will already know that if there are any hotel space is available or not. Like, you know, obviously the NFT will, will be booked by the date wise. They cannot go like anytime where they, wherever they want, whenever they want. Mm-hmm. All right, perfect. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you, Matt. Great questions. Anyone else? And by the way, I've left the pitch deck link on our, on our chat. Please have a look at it. Yeah, and we will for sure send your deck and your startup profile to every investor here in Zoom and also oh. all those that are investing in this vertical uh, from InMind Network. Oh, okay, thank you so much, Nelly. <laughs> Welcome, Samuel. So I also see the question from the live chat. How many hotels do you have already? Oh, the question just was deleted. <laughs> but <laughs> the question was about the um, the current direction. How many what else already integrated? Uh, we have all the famous hotels, like all the uh, big uh, chains we already have. Hilton, Marriott, like Demac, Aptur Hotels. Uh, we have Burj Al Arab, Taj Hotels, like everyone. We have, uh, now we currently have Emirates Airlines also a partner, it's not mentioned over there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you, Samil. If we do not have more questions from investors right now, maybe they need to digest it and then uh, come back later on. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. And uh, right now, I want to invite the next startup, also from Dubai, if I understand correctly, Meta Camel Racing Club. Ivan, are you ready to pitch? Yes, yes. Uh, Launching the demonstration. Hello, everyone. Hi, Ivan. My name. My name is Ivan, and I'm the CEO and uh, co-founder of uh, MetaCamel Racing Club. MetaCamel Racing Club is a blockchain game uh, which uh, transfers camel racing into metaverse, connecting cultural heritage and uh, modern blockchain technology. It is the first stage for creating Eastverse, a metaverse about the Middle East. Camel racing itself is a popular and authentic sport of many regions, especially Gulf countries. It is a sport of millionaires, since prices for camels range from 200,000 uh, to million dirhams. Most blockchain games lack gameplay, and that's the reason why players lose interest rapidly. On the other hand, these games are played to your games, but recent examples of such model prove to be unsustainable. At the same time, camel racing is a multi-billion dollar industry which is not widely presented in computer games, crypto games or metaverse, and getting into real camel racing is very expensive. Using blockchain technology, we are creating a game with realistic economic model, which will show the world how camel racing will look like in future. Meta Camel Racing Club is a fun-to-play game where players have to compete and show the best lap time. If the player makes it to the top of the leaderboard, he gets CRT tokens or other digital assets. Gameplay mode includes uh, training, which is a free-to-play mode, weekly tournaments, and special events, which require spending energy, and uh, only in these modes, players are rewarded. Breeding is a feature which allows players to combine uh, camel NFTs to get a new one. If you don't want to purchase a camel NFT or want to have a passive income on your camels, you can go for renting. Players also can buy mystery boxes for his different loot. We're transferring camel racing to the metaverse with camel NFTs, jockey bot NFTs, hippodrome NFTs, CRT and CBT tokens. Players can create teams which are called guilds and during special events, guilds can compete against uh, each other and win special prizes. So imagine a camel team from the United Arab Emirates compete with Saudi Arabia, for example. Business model includes in-game sales of NFTs, energy, breeding, and secondary market commissions. Our team has a good background in crypto since we have been in, uh, doing uh, research and investments since 2016, and our development team is led by Stepan Sidro, seasoned professional and co-founder of the successful Metaverse project called TCG World. We also have Sharif Arbadi as an advisor for PR and uh, marketing for Meta. CRT token is used for rewarding players, replenishing camel energy, and upgrading assets. CBD token is used for breeding. Total supply of CRT token is uh, 1 billion tokens, and we are offering uh, 1.5 uh, 
hundred million tokens uh, for one and a half cents, no, one and uh, six cents. Ten percent unlock at TGE with two months cliff and uh, twelve months wasting. Market cap at uh, TGE will be three and uh, eight uh, million dollars, and we expect uh, the token to launch at the release of the beta stage. Uh, we're looking for 2.5 million for the development, contract audits, and uh, listings. We also plan uh, to conduct a third-party audit to make our project more transparent to investors so that investing in equity can be discussed as an option. Web3 games continue to be a driving force for the dev industry. In September 22, blockchain gaming accounted for 48% block, uh, of blockchain activity, and the amount of investments demonstrate major investment entities remain bullish on the blockchain uh, gaming industry. So we believe it will be a major part of the next bull trend in crypto. Considering competition in the market, there is a Race Kingdom, UAE-based uh, camel racing game, in development since the beginning of 20, uh, 2022, and they have just released an NFT collection and uh, there's still no game. Dubai World Cup is similar concept to ours, but it's about horse racing and they have recently released an MVP. Uh, D-Race is a successful project from uh, 2021 about horse racing. What makes our project unique is that it aims at the fastest growing crypto market mana, and it will be in the narrative of Arabian countries. Players can buy hippodromes and uh, they will have incentives to promote their own races and build their own marketing strategies. Our game will provide an opportunity to create guilds and our development team is highly experienced and has already released a successful Metaverse project TCG World. We started Metacamel Racing Club in October and we already started marketing and development. Uh, so we are looking to release MVP in three months, but in third quarter and main version is the beginning of uh, 2024. Uh, so, as I uh, previously said, now we are in uh, the seed round, or how we call it, VIP round, and we would be glad to have a private Zoom call with you afterwards when we can uh, answer your questions and get your feedback. So, thanks for your attention. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, I think you forgot to mention how much are you raising, right? Uh, yes, we are raising uh, two and a half million now. Okay, uh, for the seed round. Good. Thanks Thank you. for your presentation. So questions from investors. Don't forget to unmute yourself, guys, uh, to ask questions to Ivan. Um, yeah. Sorry, Ivan, uh, I just couldn't really understand how much you raised exactly. 2.5 uh, million. Now we are raising 2.5 million, but uh, we okay. started the project uh, with self-funding. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Alejandro, do you have any questions? Oh, Matt, Matt, please yeah. go on. I have a question. So maybe what's the differentiator within this game between something like Zed Run or Ali Sport? And then like, how have you maybe like added in or, or improved like the token economics for that? Uh, at first, uh, uh, our game will have uh, gameplay where you will have to uh, push one button uh, that whips uh, the camel. Uh, it is a button for controlling the jockey boat and it is uh, taken from uh, real camel racing. It is how it goes in reality. And uh, that's the first thing that our game will have the uh, some kind of gameplay. Uh, secondly, uh, if you buy a Campbell NFT and you uh, participate in uh, races, it doesn't guarantee that you will win tokens because uh, you uh, need uh, to be among the first players, uh, first places uh, to receive tokens. And uh, also, uh, we are providing uh, a lot of uh, utility, uh, a lot of utility for in game and uh, later. Uh, since uh, we are uh, using MetaCamel Racing Club as a foundation for the future Eastwards, later our token will have uh, utility in the full Metaverse game about uh, uh, Middle East. And uh, we uh, think that uh, by, uh, by having additional utility for the token, by having uh, additional gameplay, uh, we will make our model more sustainable. And uh, at the same time, we do not plan to 
uh, have uh, uh, some kind of enormous <coughs> enormous rewards for the first players what uh, uh, made harm uh, to previous games which uh, used uh, these big rewards for building hype we uh, plan uh, to uh, make uh, some kind of moderate uh, system of uh, rewards which doesn't ruin the economy does it answer your question matt oh uh, yeah it does thank you thank you matt any more questions from investors here in zoom yeah joe joe please go on yeah so uh thank you for bringing up these ideas have you think of like incorporating the vr like i think this kind of game is pretty like fits how vr works because you know that you got handles you can like pretending you are riding the camel so have a think of the vr incorporation uh thanks for the question uh it is uh uh it is a very interesting idea of implementing uh, vr uh but uh, mm -hmm. i think uh, we will uh we will return to this uh later uh when we will be developing the full metaverse game because uh, now uh the project will be uh focused on uh, mobile devices to uh, bring more adoption but uh uh obviously we were talking about vr but uh, uh current uh, current co concept doesn't include uh, vr due to technical restrictions but uh, later i think uh, it will be a great idea because uh, now uh, people from uh, united arab emirates saudi arabia qatar bahrain amman from uh, all gcc uh, come to uh, united arab emirates to abu dhabi and dubai where the uh, biggest racetracks are located and uh, if they will have an opportunity to participate in vr uh, why not <laughs> they will uh, they uh, may be participating uh, sitting somewhere in uh, london or they can uh, race uh, during the summer or when the real races mm -hmm. uh, doesn't occur so that uh, may be many use cases and we discussed it okay appreciate it. thank you Thank you, Joe. Are the investors here in Zoom? Yeah, Petro, please go on. Yeah, I have a short question. I just want to understand the current round, the current round you are raising through token or equity. And if through token, what are your strategies to protect from selling pressure at the beginning? Uh, now we are talking about uh, raising through tokens because uh, uh, there are different types of investors some prefer tokens some prefer equity and uh, be because of the uh, you know the liquidity of uh, different uh, types of uh, investing and uh, uh, we are planning to conduct a third party audit so that uh, uh, equity investing uh, can be discussed as an option too and uh, considering uh, the stability of the economic model and uh, protecting against uh, dumping the token so we are implementing some uh, uh, not some we are Im implementing utility for the token uh, the first and uh, the second uh, we plan to uh, uh, w w we plan to distinguish a big part of money for market making so that uh, we will be able uh, to defend it in, in case uh, there will be dumps. Okay, got it. And what uh, token allocation is uh, actually prepared for liquidity, reserved for liquidity? 8% uh, of uh, all tokens are uh, reserved for liquidity and uh, the equal amount of uh, USDT will be used as well. Okay, thank you so much for your answers. Clear thank point. you, Petra. Very straightforward questions. And by the way, if you have comments as well, don't hesitate to share them. I mean, if you think that uh, uh, third person, for example, for, just for, for instance, yeah, is a, a bit too much or whatever. Uh, so let us know. The feedback is also very much appreciated by the founders. 
Yes, uh, of course. Uh, but uh, I uh, I see that uh, many uh, questions, uh, not many, some, some questions, more, most questions addressed to sustainability. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, yes, uh, it, it is uh, one of the most challenging uh, things uh, because our game will have play to play to earn mechanics, which uh, didn't uh, prove to be sustainable. But uh, at the same time, we first we don't promote our project as a play to earn. Uh, we prefer to say play and earn uh, because uh, the first thing, uh, well, the things we uh, the which comes first is the player's experience. And that uh, uh, his and and that thing with uh, camel racing is uh, it's it's not a gamble. It's not a, a sports in traditional way. It is more like a tradition. Uh, it's more it's more like a tradition of uh, Arabian people and uh, people from Mena. So uh, this concept and uh, the gameplay are in the first place, and uh, all the uh play to your mechanics uh on the second place in the in the second place good uh thanks Ivan, for elaborating on this and since i do not see more questions from investors here in zoom chat let me ask a couple of questions from a, a live channel so uh one of the users is asking uh horse racing or metadoga are similar uh to your gameplay uh, and they are already dead uh, so how your project can stand up how can you ensure that your project will survive i think the sense of this uh, question is uh, there were similar uh ideas uh to be executed uh, on the market some time ago but many of them have died already uh, it's. Uh, uh, I don't know about the particular project uh, which is uh, being uh, discussed, but uh, for example, uh, the projects uh, like uh, Zed Run, uh, D Race, Pigaxi, uh, the biggest uh, projects from the previous uh, uh, bull trend uh, and uh, all those uh, blockchain gaming and uh, metaverse stuff, uh, they are not actually dead. Uh, they uh, have uh, suffered a uh, severe selling pressure on the token and the tokens are uh, uh, very uh, some of the tokens are at uh, their all-time lows but uh, uh, when uh, the uh, when the bull trend uh, returns back let's see who will uh, uh, roll out some updates and then we will uh, judge who is dead or not uh, because uh, now it is bearish time and it's good for building but at the same time uh, we uh, as I already told we uh, will be trying to avoid uh, the uh, high selling pressure by uh, lowering the reward uh, part and uh, make uh, the reward system just uh, an, uh, some kind of addition to the gameplay and uh, at the same time, we are, will provide uh, utility for the token, the in-game utility and uh, utility outside the game, uh, outside the MetaCamel Racing Club game. For example, as I mentioned, uh, Eastverse Metaverse, which will uh, combine many games. For example, uh, it can be both uh, in this Metaverse, both uh, Camel Racing can exist uh, build uh building artificial islands can exist and buggy racing uh lamborghini tuning so uh anything uh but uh, cliche things uh, for arabian world and uh this uh, will be fueled all by crt token and uh when i'm talking about issuers it's because uh we have uh, our co-founder sipan uh, as a co-founder of uh, TCG World Metaverse, a successful metaverse which uh, sold uh, more than 100,000 uh, lands uh, one and a half year ago. And uh, so we, we know how to build the uh, metaverse, but uh, at the same time, you need to build it on some kind of foundation. You have to have a community and building a community in uh, many region in Arabian culture, uh, in uh, Arabian cultures, uh, countries, 
uh, is uh, very challenging for us because uh, not that much people did it. And uh, that's what distinguishes us from other previous uh, other previous project, which maybe died, maybe not. Uh, but uh, we are focusing on a different marking and we have a bit of a different model. Okay, Ivan, uh, the last question for today. How long runaway you will have with 2.5 million? 12 months. 12 months. Okay. Yes. Thanks a lot for answering all the questions. And uh, yeah, we will follow up with you shortly. You can stop your screen share right now. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have a trailer and uh, I will uh share the pitch deck in the chat or maybe later where it is yeah for sure anyway in mind team will send all your documents pitch deck and startup profile to all investors so okay. you can do it thank yourself you. but we will also do it ourselves okay thank you very much thank you can you please stop your screen uh -huh. right now it's okay and uh, i want to invite the next startup this time, uh, the company from US and uh, this um, startup has an interesting story. They were the winners of uh, uh, the um, Silicon Valley competition. Uh, so the Draper University and Draper VC Network uh, hosted this startup for some time uh, on uh, the accelerator in San Francisco. So please uh, meet uh, Irina, and uh, she's uh, the founder at Bank of Memories. Irina, are you ready to pitch? Definitely. Hi. Hi, everyone. Happy to see you all. And I love in mind community. Um, so let me let me start. We have plenty of time, like five minutes is a lot of time for me to explain. <laughs> Happy to hear that because other founders often complain that it's too little time. I agree with you. That's enough. Short is good. Yeah, so hi all, I'm Arena uh, from Bank of Memories. We are building an ecosystem for families on blockchain. Uh, before I start, I encourage you to think, uh, where is real you? Where is all data, important stuff you own, your assets, uh, crypto, NFTs, and memories, your family, where all is this? Um, in fact, we are losing a lot of data. Uh, I have at least five to seven social media accounts. All of them, of course, don't belong to me. They are centralized. And all of that loads of information is reporting a lot of stuff on me. Uh, but at the same time, I don't have a lot of value out of that. This is how evolution of heritage looks like. So we are building a DAP uh, with a mix of heritage and assets for new generations. You see that uh, we had some USB drives, whatever. Now we are in the age of uh, aging, aging multi-billion dollars companies like uh, MyHeritage, Ancestry, uh, Dropbox, and other stuff. And now we understand that infrastructure is there. There is already Filecoin, Airweave, and other decentralized uh, storages. But the product for mass adoption is not there. So uh, new families, young families like me, have totally different uh, interests and um, interests compared to people who are using Web2. And uh, our task is offering something cool and new for families uh, so that it's not boring, it's not feeling dusty, and it's dynamic. Uh, so we are offering to mint NFT memories. This is something new. Uh, where you can add your voice, uh, so some special moments, some picture, video, or document, and encapsulate it, keep it in one place. Then you have uh, time capsules to send to yourself or to your friends with crypto gifts or uh, NFTs, and family fund that you can form with crypto for new newborns. Uh, you can stake as a family and get rewards. So the magic here is that uh, when I pay for one user to get them online, uh, there will be around four to five new users in my customer acquisition cost is like $4. That means I can potentially generate uh, $20 from all of uh, these users. We have great traction, especially after the program uh, that Tim Draper funded for us. Uh, it, it, uh, 18 partnerships, uh, 5,000 users that we could get in uh, two months. Uh, we launched our app in the end of 2021, and we presented it at Web Summit. We were in around a top 10 project to discover, and that was the time we actually met Tim Draper. 
Uh, we earned uh, $5,500 uh, as a test in October, November last year. And we know that the market is huge. Still, uh, I love your uh, comparison with left-handed people around the world, just 8, 000, uh, 800 million and crypto uh, people, just 400 million people around the world. So we see uh, the market is actually huge of people who are storing data, uh, NFT market. Uh, the biggest market for us in our core market now is the US, uh, is more than 40%. And uh, we see a great growth here and great use case. Uh, and of course, data is growing up. So a lot of data that, that we'll need to store and uh, keep it nice and tidy. Uh, but only those who uh, show great business models will win. Um, so we are offering the business model where you pay like almost nothing for storage. You can mint NFT memories and pay uh, pay some small fee. And um, additionally, you can do a digital will. Digital will to inherit all of that stuff you have already in the system. So how will acquire users? We want to acquire 2 million users and we know how to do that through social media through affiliate marketing, because there are uh, at least 1,000 businesses around the world with the same target audience who are willing to have the revenue sharing, and through social projects uh, through um, that we are doing right now. Our clients are USAID and cities in uh, my country, several other countries, where we are doing some uh, cultural heritage thing, and people can view it outside with their phone. For that, they need our app. So this is a source of free traffic that we can get. Um, around competition, we have uh, two companies that is most closely doing a uh, thing that we are doing. Uh, memory Gardens, also from US. Um, they are doing NFT uh, memory gallery in Metaverse. And Memories is like a copy of uh, Facebook, but for older people. And uh, they're totally Web2, but they have $37 million funding. And like they're, they're growing well. However, I've been in this industry for more than three years, and I see that many startups are dying who are doing something similar to us. But now I know why they're dying. There are two reasons why. First is that because they are uh, trying to replicate Facebook. It doesn't work. And they are trying to create some one feature, and people don't need one feature. They need one ecosystem for everything. Uh, this is our team. We are a group of uh, engineers um, with more than 15 years of experience in our field, uh, professional crypto traders. Uh, we, are, we were working at Porsche, Cardano Ecosystem. I am organizer of Crypto Mondays in Palo Alto. And um, we, have, we definitely know what we're doing, how to sell products. Um, we also have advisors from uh, Ancestry, Techstars, Filecoin, and these people are helping to build. Uh, and all the great things happened to us last year after we became top 10 products to discover the Web Summit. Tim Draper saw us, Polygon uh, gave us grants, so uh, totally 300K in uh, family and friends funding and grants that we got last year. And we are raising 1.5 uh, to get 100 uh, monthly active users uh, and get our uh, team full time. 100K. Monthly active users. Yeah. 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 You said 100 monthly active users. So, okay. Great. Oh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Are you finished? Um, yeah, my, maybe I'll, I'll tell that uh, uh, this is the roadmap of our product. Uh, so we are going to implement um, NFT memories uh, this year. We already have users who are waiting for that. And we are going to enter DAX, but we are raising in equity with uh, token warrants. Yeah, so let's help people to save themselves in all of that loads of information that actually nobody needs, uh, but we are still bombarded with all of that stuff. Let's just be mindful about ourselves and focus on what really matters. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks so much, Irina, for this presentation. It was really, really good pitch. And uh, just okay. before we go into questions from investors, a small comment from my side. When I first time met you and Bank of Memories, uh, personally, I didn't clearly understand uh, the use case. Why should I keep my memories somewhere in digital if we have all this, you know, Instagram, all this uh, telephone, <laughs> fulfill memories and so on. 
Yeah, but recently, uh, without even noticing that, uh, my son uh, um, is 18 now, and uh, he uh, says so many stupid things about the future. So I started recording it on the telephone, just in order when I will have grandchildren to show them uh, how stupid his father was <laughs> at his 80s, 18s. And um, I thought that it is amazing use case for Bank of Memories as well. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. I, um, my husband is collecting the worst pictures of me. I don't know why he's doing that, but like the worst things. And uh, like when I look really, really not nice and he's showing, uh, sharing it through Bank of Memories so that it's private, right? It's uh, decentralized and cool. So yeah, but just uh, I want to, to underline that, you know, uh, gamers are good. Yeah, 1 billion people will uh, enter enter the space through gaming but there are still other people who are probably not playing or maybe they are older or maybe uh, so they are definitely still a use case and a huge industry that is aging where I can get in with my product okay so now let's see what investors want to ask you about sure. guys please unmute yourself and go on yeah um I have a question about how much it costs for you to do storage on your side like how much is it per like gigabyte on your side? 0 0.009 uh, and plus we have Filecoin partnership. So it's uh, a lot of things are free there. So uh, yeah, like terabytes of data for uh, several years is free for us. But then uh, we have to pay like 0 0.009. Uh, we are not going to build our own infrastructure at the moment because there are other professionals in, in the industry and we would better spend money on uh, customer adoption and creating a cool product rather than getting into infrastructure. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Other questions, please? Yeah, go on. So um, sorry to be like more critical a little bit. So um, if I'm paying like, you know, $6 for iCloud and saving all the images or videos I have. So I think the only incentive for the Web2 people to come into your platform will be the reward, like token rewards, I would say. Mm -hmm. Do I understand it correctly? Or there's more incentive that I do not notice? Definitely. Uh, yeah. So if you can see here, we have the whole uh, uh, economics uh, and incentivizing how we, how much we will give to what users for filling out family tree. We have incentives for uh, storing a lot of data. So it's all um, clearly stated for our customers on the website and it's kind of a safe and earn model not safe to earn, but safe and earn model. A lot of incentives there, um, bonuses for filling the tree, bonuses for uh, active, uh, being active, then referral links. So when you refer someone, you always get uh, coins. When you find the bug in our system, you always get coins. And this is everything in our tokenomics. Um, yeah, here, more than half of coins will go to users. Um, for growing the ecosystem, we want to create it a close to a kind of a DAO where um, where consumers will will people are active in our ecosystem um, and staking that I was telling you about a family fund where people can just give some coins for staking uh, like couple or family or clan and they will always get uh, yield and they can use this yield as a personal uh, withdrawal. Uh, money if they like have two hundred dollars they can withdraw it if they want or they can use it uh, inside the ecosystem for example i have a mom and dad they have plenty of stuff to do and i just uh, give my coins there and they just do it easy okay. uh irina you gave a very comprehensive answer uh regarding the uh, incentives uh part but i think the question was a bit wider what other um, motivation would be to use bank of memories versus iCloud, for example. So rewards is one thing. What else? Right. 
Uh, yeah, so first of all, we are targeting uh, crypto users and family uh, families uh, around the world or who don't like uh, when it's centralized and when everything can be blocked tomorrow. Can you even imagine all of your stuff that is important to you can be gone tomorrow? Like, that's it. Nothing else. Uh, and especially, I'm coming from Ukraine. And you know what's happening now in Ukraine and Russia. We have to be super careful about what we store, how we store. And uh, in US and other many other countries, everything is great. But there are many economies around the world who need this kind of product where it's safe and uh, censorship free. Uh, so I believe this is uh, number two. Of course, people who care about family and they are always ready to pay some money for their family to make sure they have some great product. When we give rewards, it's for younger generation who already got used to give, uh, getting rewards. But for other uh, people a little bit older like me, um, privacy is more important. Okay, Joe, are you satisfied? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my I got a couple of questions that. So I suppose you adopt some like ZK kind of things to 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 achieve privacy if putting my images on chain. Yeah, we are storing hash uh, hash transactions and uh, we mm -hmm. are storing, so we are encapsulating in NFT. So it all belongs to you. It's super safe. Uh, okay. And it's, it's your collection. It's a collectible. For example, I have uh, a memory like how my husband uh, did a proposal for me and then uh, some other people have some, you know, special moments. Something that I can scroll down and see and remember. Because this stuff is important and gives me a trajectory in the future. Uh, Instagram and Facebook and some random advertising will not set my brain for success. But uh, my uh, previous experience, my positive emotions uh, is, is something that will matter. Gotcha, gotcha. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Joe. Other investors, please don't hesitate to unmute yourself and ask. Belinda, please go on. Yeah, I can take that one. Um, so I totally get the value that you're um, going for here with the heritage. Um, I see the space getting more and more crowded. Um, how do you compete with startups, for example, um, using AI to, to, um, to encapsulate their memories? The voice, for example, um, and other startups that are using AR, um, VR, of course, um, geo geolocalized NFTs, for example, in in in, in real um, places where those memories happened. Um, I want to better understand five years down the road where where you're going to. Yeah, so probably the best slide to show is here. Uh, definitely, we know uh, about uh, this trend that AI, uh, AI is developing now, uh, and it's also here uh, in our trend. We are uh, what we want to do is called a generic voice. So everything you have in your system, from DNA contracts, uh, some some important memories, everything will be analyzed as well with uh, API. So it's it's easy uh, to do now. The technology, as I said, we are not going to build our own AI, our own infrastructure, but we are going to use the best what was already in, in the market to help people navigate. Uh, and what you mentioned about AR, if you download our app, you will see it's already there. If you go to our website, you will see it's uh, already there uh, to view our memories that are related to uh, some physical, to the places we've been, to some physical objects like pictures on the wall, like a photo album, but you know, AR, is just an add-on, is not something that is a core feature. Uh, is it just something that will bring us more adoption? For example, there is a digital monument in Vienna uh, and we created a, a short video about that place so that people who can speak German can easily understand where they are and what they're looking at. Imagine million people are passing by every day. So for Bank of Memories, it's potentially can be a lot of users who will download and view uh, through AR these kind of memories. And then we will follow up with these users using them. Like, um, hi, so uh, here's Bank of Memories. You just watch this kind of memory. How about, and we are then showing them a short guide of what they 
can actually do in uh, in our app. So yeah, we partially the answer short answer is yes, we are already using AR, and actually our five thousand users, half of them we got using AR, and AI is something that will happen next year after we raise because uh, having raised just you know 300k in grants and family uh, funding ai is something like a spaceship you have to <laughs> raise money for that first right good thank Belinda, you are you satisfied or you have follow-up question no it's it's great um, um i can definitely understand um, and I like that um, there's a huge opportunity out there. Um, I wonder also, how do you make it seamless for people to, um, to, to record um, their memories? Um, and definitely it's also related to the golden market strategy. Um, feel free to loop, loop in um, that in the answer. Uh, right. Yeah. So what we are creating now is a, a timeline of your life. It's not like Facebook timeline. It's a different one. So we are giving, uh, so the system is asking questions, something that uh, like, uh, where were you born? Uh, something about your family, uh, asking you, automatically asking you to connect uh, someone to your uh, family tree. Um, yeah. So we, uh, we will build in a short video and a voice, um, voice recording. Uh, voice is already now, work, we are working on that, will be uh, uh, working next month. I can uh, do a app presentation for you next month already with that. So I understand that people are uh, not willing to waste their time to record everything. So we as a system have to help them with some templates and that's uh, what timeline is. Good. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you, Belinda. Great questions. And uh, thank you, Irina, for your thank answers. You. Uh, we will follow up shortly with you together. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Good. Thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, let me introduce the next startup that is pitching today. This time it's a company from the Netherlands. And uh, the name of the company is Miax. I hope I pronounced it correctly. Kainer. Do I do it right? Hello? Kainer? Kainer is muted. Yeah, can you hear me, guys? Right now, yes. Yeah, cool. Uh, so it's my X. It's abbreviation of my avatar X, actually. OK, sorry. Yeah. Sorry for No, no, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so if I may, I would like to screen start the presentation. Yeah, definitely. I see your Can you screen now? my screen? Okay, yeah, that's perfectly. Good. Five minutes okay. later. Yeah. Oh, just a minute. Okay, you let me know. <laughs> so, uh, my ad is a project backed by Polygon. Uh, it's a new generation digital content creation platform. We are helping influencers to create engaging content for their social networks with avatars. And also we are, help, we are helping designers, uh, fashion designers or uh, uh, illustrators uh, to create uh, variable fashion NFTs uh, through our platform. We are a sense of reach uh, from Web2 to Web3 for uh, content creators, actually. And there is lots of you know, friction on that. We have uh, our own non-custodial wallet, a social recovery wallet that we say. Uh, and a create to earn mechanism, which led us to have a you know word of mouth. This is the market size of creator economy. We are starting with passion influencers because of you know the connections and the you know the uh, past experience we have. Then we are moving to influencer marketing economy, then the creator economy. And you see the numbers are you know uh, growing up. And the creator economy means that it, everything is one of one quarter of everything you see online created by this you know. Uh, the community. So our really proposition is simple, you know, we are op offering you uh, a platform to uh, create engaging content actually with your avatar uh, for social networks with four easy steps that we say. <laughs> uh, you create your avatar from scratch or you can take a selfie. You can dress up your avatar in 
in-app uh, MyAx Fashion NFT uh, marketplace. Then you create a super engaging content. Let me say you, you create a TV of yourself and dance and then share it on TikTok or a little red book on Instagram. And then you get paid by my access, incentivized by that. So there's an innovation. You know, as I mentioned, there's a great friction on Web3 project when we you know, talk to each other, you know, entrepreneur to entrepreneur, let me say. So uh, you, you can you know, easily create your account and create your uh, wallet. Don't, don't forget these people don't have any uh, wallets. They never bought an NFT before. They never bought a, a cryptocurrency before. So let me jump in the you know, fashion NFTs. Uh, with super is the process when, where you design your work uh, for variable NFT, then it's you know mint and list on our uh, platform. Uh, so let me go the acceptance of fashion NFT. This is you know not like traditional NFT market. The uh, person level of investment is not affecting you know uh, by the resale value. You, mm -hmm. you have to you know show the status benefit to user. Uh, the user should be younger, you know, uh, the, the younger they get, they are more likely to buy. And it has to be a trustful brand, you know, or designer. So we got three coin utilities. One of them, as I mentioned, to create, to earn. And the other one, you mean think the fashion NFTs. And third one is staking, you know, uh, thanks God we have our non custody wallet that we have the, you know, security and flexibility to uh, create a stake, stake and pools. Uh, so let me jump into tokenomics. Uh, I would like to, you know, uh, keep an eye that on my ecosystem. This is where we use, you know, the create to earn mechanism and the private sale round is a five percent. We don't want to create whales for the project, actually. Uh, so let me go to inflation. The project has an inflation for 40 months. So we are on phase three, actually. Uh, and your next uh, phase is going to be uh, ICO phases. They are going to be uh, six month ICOs back to back for uh, geographic distribution. Then we are offer our first NFT line with famous Turkish designers. That these are hot culture designers, uh, like Isaac Kapoor, Raisa Vanessa, Nipek Kremar, with our non custody wallet. Then, and we are in six months, we are uh, offer our iOS and Android apps, which we are where you can create your avatar and uh, videos and to share. And the last one is that you are going to be wait for three months. Even I can create a 3D asset can be run by avatar website. So uh, this is a team. We are working as a founders team uh, since uh, 2015 on AI and beauty tech projects. And, and we got six uh, people on board also who are helping us to uh, audience, uh, design, uh, and coding also. Uh, and we got partners like Polygon in uh, marketing and uh, the, the Metaverse Standards Forum. We have an upward, right? I don't know, do you know, heard about Metaverse Standards Forum? It's a forum created by uh, Meta and Google. And there are a couple of companies, uh, Web3 companies, that are trying to find out, create the standards of Metaverse. And we have upward right on fashion NFTs. And these are the, you know, the uh, exchanges we uh, already plan to, you know, uh, do our ICOs. So there are three board of advisors from various uh, backgrounds. Volkan is a a CEO of Gamester, they create a children game and great ecosystem on Sandbox. Uh, professor Dr. Emir Otol, you know, he was he's a, a finance professor in, in the Istanbul University. He works on the business model that we have. It has to be sustainable. Shan helps us through the you know the communities, and this is the investment proposal. We are uh, offering a seven hundred fifty thousand round size with minimum ticket size of fifty thousand. It, uh, but you know, 50,000 is already sold. Now we have uh, 700,000 uh, right now. The listing price will be uh, one cent uh, and project valuation will be 15 million and we're offering 50% discount on that. The token must think of 10 months after listing 10% uh, each month. So uh, am I fast enough uh, for five minutes? I don't know. <laughs> You are perfect in time. Thank you. You know, I was so stressful about that, you know, making it five. <laughs> Don't get stressed. Uh, get, uh, you know, example of uh, Irina, who is super calm and confident. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good. Uh, thanks a lot, Kainer, for your pitch. And uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. It was, it was a good pitch, uh, believe me. Well, thank you. So questions from investors, please.
Alejandro from CDFI, you are keeping very calm and silent today. Do you have any questions? Not so far. I'm, I'm not feeling well today. So just uh, listening and, and taking notes. I will ask you maybe later to contact some, some of the projects. Okay, sure. Um, sorry for you feeling not very good. Hope you will get better soon. It's yeah. okay. Thank you. Um, Apostol, any questions from your side? Uh, none on my end. Okay. Um, Belinda? Um, so maybe, maybe one, um, are you, can, can you give us a better picture on, um, the partnerships you have, um, and maybe the pipeline of, for the year? Yeah. Let me jump into the, the you know, the, uh, where partners are, uh, there are, you know, uh, some technical partners, uh, for, uh, creating uh, avatars such as Wolf 3D, uh, which can be, you know, uh, there, there are other partners who would like to also create, uh, give their uh, avatars to the project, but we are now partnering up with them. Uh, Polygon is a great partner in, you know, uh, especially in marketing. Uh, and also they uh, promised us to, uh, if, you know, we got a lead investor from a list, they're going to invest up to 2050, I guess, from 50 to 2050. And the, uh, there's a company called Clo. Uh, it's uh, you know the this is a tool for fashion designers. They create stuff from scratch actually, and uh, we are also partnering up with them. And we partner up with a couple of fashion brands because they don't know how to create them. 3D variable asset actually, because they don't have an atlas for that. So right now we are also working for these companies uh, like uh, you know. Uh, graphic designer we create their you know uh, stuff for them for 3d uh, versions of them which they can mint uh, later on on sell on our platform actually uh you know i don't want to miss anyone else uh, so this is pretty much it is i guess how about um um when you mentioned in your deck earlier um that by creating the avatar you could use it um, to create content? Are you using computer vision or any tools like that? Yeah, it's actually, you know, using AR and VR tools. You create your avatar, you know, uh, and you dress up your avatar with fashion NFTs. And it's like you use your phone's uh, capabilities, your AR and VR capabilities, uh, which, you know, we are blessed with the iOS, you know, it's working really uh, smoothly. Uh, so in, in this way, when you share it, uh, you know, we got your credentials and know how much uh, effort you put, actually, how much you uh, uh, give uh, feedback to the ecosystem, you know, what's your reach? This, this is the whole question. How many people see your uh, uh, content created by us? And it's really important for L'Oreal and Estelada because we have a proof of concept. We created first our, uh, our first avatar called Maya. She's a beauty uh, influencer. Yeah, actually, she's a virtual influencer. She's just, uh, you know, uh, face and body. She's an avatar. She's doing interviews on uh, YouTube with uh, real people, uh, real influencers, uh, fashion and beauty influencers. And we got sponsorship from Estelader and Loria for that. This was, you know, our first uh, move uh, to get this uh, brands on and uh, we and also contact with influencers. So everybody wants to have uh, on Avatar. And, you know, it's a burden right now. We have a uh, budget seats, et cetera. One of our, uh, you know, I sits down, uh, you know, then we, you know, make a lot of editing. Uh, however, you know, with the uh, iOS app, we are going to create, there won't be any, you know, uh, complications like that. It's going to be easy to use uh, and easy to share actually. I'm so Thank sorry, you. I'm jumping to another dimension, probably. I'm so sorry about that. So, Belinda, are you satisfied with the answers? Yeah, it's good on my side. Thank you. And I also noticed you have Big X and XT Home, both are exchanges, and at the same time, they have uh, incubation facilities. So, what is your partnership with them? Oh, with who? I'm so sorry. XTCOM and Bitex. 
Yeah, the, we are not utilizing their accelerating, just listening. Uh, maybe we are not, you know, make it public. We are waiting for BNB accelerator. Probably they will, uh, you know, because it's a show, social file and they, we have, we together think that we have a potential of uh, 5,000 daily active wallets because of the nature of the business, you know, you create stuff. Uh, and there are 50 million influencers right now and 40% uh, of them create daily uh, videos, you know, so it's a burden for them. They uh, they need some tools to create some engaging content. So because of that, we are going to, we are uh, having a lot of, you know, people uh, and in future we are planning actually to more like my ex will be in three to five years uh, and a uh, web three identity uh, platform. You know, you got your avatar, avatars and your wardrobe. And with the, you know, the help of the multi-chain and interoperability, you can go any Web3 project you know, uh, using your NFTs. Uh, what, what we are talking with Yandy actually is that, about that. Uh, we would like to uh, use, uh, create a use case for NFTs and BNB chain on metaverse projects, uh, because we got lots of, you know, put a lot of effort on the studio where people can create 3D assets, which are, uh, Meta standardized assets, let me say, can be worn by the avatar. You would like to have the you know, a channel uh, for all projects which can utilize for new users because we got lots of users which are not Web3 ready. Uh, we are bringing these people in, uh, like what Instagram does for Facebook for the beginning, you know, just having a great tool uh, and then use this as an ID, ID you know, uh, you can go there and use your NFTs and dress up like that. I'm like, yeah. Got ya. Uh, Matt, Petra, Joe, do you have any questions to Kainer? Yeah, so far so good. Thank you. Uh, I did. Ah, you have. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I said I do, I do not at this time. Ah, you did not, okay. Okay, perfect. We have uh, the last question in the chat. Uh, how do you compete with DressX? Ah, DressX is not direct competitor. Probably they are going to be our partners because they create great NFTs. However, they are not ready to run by avatars. Uh, they got a great ecosystem, uh, which we also contacted a lot of uh, KLS from uh, this uh, ecosystem, which are talented designers. Uh, you know, uh, with the utility that we put, uh, you know, the main importance is about uh, acceptance of NFTs, and it, it is about showing off. You know, if you own a you know good brand, that you know, she would like to show it off. This is the same methodology, and this this is the this is the why we are hoping that Dressix and other uh, ecosystems will also enjoy uh, our marketplace, NFT marketplace, which has actually this. Uh, Clothes and accessories should be standardized. Uh, you know, right now they don't use this methodology. Uh, you can use any, you know, the design uh, and call it fashion, but it's not variable. Okay, got ya. So if anyone is in touch with Dressix, uh, let us know and uh, maybe yeah. we introduce <laughs> my ex with Dressix. Good, uh, Kainer. Thanks a lot for your presentation. You can thank you so here. much. Pause. I will start trying to pause it. Yeah, stop share. Good. Very, Th very. Thank good. you so much, guys. <laughs> Thanks for your energy and pitch today. And uh, I want to invite a startup from Switzerland, uh, Aidon Metaverse, and the founder Claude Steiner. Claude, are you ready? Yes. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, let me quickly uh, share screen, then we can kick yeah. off here. Um, I still love your background. <laughs> thank you. And not even feeling dizzy. Yeah, That's right good. Now. Good to know. You can all see my screen so far. Good. Yes. Yes. yes all is good. good. Okay, <clears throat> we are, uh, as you mentioned, uh, a startup in Switzerland, and we want to provide a high quality metaverse. So. Let me quickly summarize what problems we identified. Uh, first, as I said, if you take a look at what is existing right now, you quickly find out that there is only low quality uh, in, from the graphical aspect. Uh, most often you need to install an app uh, and you have long loading times. So this is all something that is scaring the user uh, off uh, using the system. 
Then from the business side, uh, we identified that there is a high segmentation. This means many metaverses exist uh, that have only one solution or one approach, like a showroom or an art gallery or an NFT gallery. There is nothing that is really <clears throat> serving different industries together. And uh, so the survey with all approach is missing. We also saw that there is a lack of integrated business solutions. So what we understand as integrated business solutions, so off the shelf products for different industries. Uh, companies are therefore often forced to engineer proprietary solution, what is even enforcing then the problem on the right side with the highly segmentation. So how we approach this? We have three pillars uh, that we are uh, serving. One is this off-the-shelf metaverse with off-the-shelf standardized solution for different industries. Uh, the middle part is we call it collaborate, co collaboration metaverse, where you really can uh, work together with us to be consulted and we build for you. And finally, you will have your own uh, specific working business case in the metaverse. And on the right side, you see that you can uh, simply buy land and then self-service metaverse, you can build your own solution, your own approach for this. And we are even open for people who are serving here the right side with building their own approach that we are open for a partnership then to use this in our off the shelf side uh, to provide this solution to a wider audience. You can see no download needed accessible in a normal web browser, uh, no special hardware needed, no VR uh, goggles needed. Of course, we support it, but it's not really uh, needed to, to uh, have this visit in our metaverse. That is important for us because we don't want to restrict ourselves uh, to some VR goggle holders. We want to have it open for everybody. So what kind of off-the-shelf solutions we already have or are working on? What we already have, because we are coming from this uh, sector, uh, is a fully working uh, add-on shopping uh, approach. So we have all the product administration, the offering handling, we have the payment solution all integrated. So if you want, you can really start tomorrow a shop uh, in, in our metaverse. What we partially have integrated is an approach for real estate where you can showcase what you are building or going to build uh, in a nearly photorealistic approach. You can showcase which apartments are still free, which are taken, with, which are sold, and you can make a listing uh, with the same backend, by the way, like we use there. Of course, we support showrooms and on the left side, then you also see art galleries. That's a standard that is already working out of the box. Uh, coming soon, because we don't put so much focus is the business hub. Uh, what is partially integrated is uh, Aedan Fashion. We are about to partnering up with a Swiss startup in the medical sector that is providing digital services in, in the medical hospi hospital sector. And uh, we want to have some integrated uh, approaches there too. So we are serving an open world land. So what does it mean? We are serving the whole planet. Uh, you can have it geolocated. This means uh, if you live in LA, if you live in Tokyo, if you live in Zurich or wherever you be, Lebanon, of course, too. Uh, you can buy land there and you can put your own solution or one of our off-the-shelf solutions directly on this lawn that you buy and it uh, is served there. Like this, we want to have some touch of cult cultural uh, engagement. So if you put something in Tokyo, then you would think that uh, the, the culture there is a bit different than if you put something in New York. Of course, most of the things are happening in cities and not somewhere in a forest. So uh, important for us is that the, the, the quality of the cities are, are uh, is high and 
most of the off-the-shelf solutions or even self-serviced, self-built solutions will be served in cities, uh, in buildings there. To kickstart this a bit, uh, we will build in the biggest cities worldwide some attraction cluster that is first run by us. Uh, so for the people who don't want to buy land, you can rent uh, a part of a building and we put our off-the-shelf solution there. So we want to have this fast growing that something is there. We also saw that there is a lack of, lack of uh, attraction for the existing uh, metaverses. So we want to have this core built fast. If you compare the others with us, you see that we want to serve a universal metaverse that is not focused on gaming. Don't get me wrong here. We are not against gaming. That's all good and right, but we would like to have it a bit business-centered. Gaming is allowed, of course, to have something uh, game-like in our metaverse, but it's not the main focus. We also don't want like Earth to have some essence and some jewels on our ground and uh, a million different tokens and how this is connected and uh, everything. That is too much gamification. We want to keep it a bit straight and uh, a bit business centered. The off the shelf solutions I told you, uh, we provide Metaverse as a service. So you can rent some off the shelf solution from us or we provide services that we build something for you. There is no app download, no loading time, web browser access already set. If you compare the graphic quality with what we have on the right side, uh, with the left thing, left side things, uh, with the biggest existing right now, is quite obvious where we stand and position ourselves. Market size. McKinsey and many other researchers uh, prognose that by 2030 it will be a multi-trillion uh, market. Uh, now with the more war and the uh, <clears throat> the economic uh, downturn that possibly comes, maybe is here already, maybe it will be not that big, but it's undoubtedly clear that the market will be huge. And the big brands and the big companies will not be able to just ignore the, the metaverse that is coming. So we want to grow together with this forecast, this 40% annual growth rate that is far above average of many other things. And we want to cut our share of this mark. Our business model, Metaverse as a service. So we consult, we make 3D design, we uh, make customer tailored solution. Of course, this costs the customer money. We will uh, create a part of our revenue from this side. Future revenue streams, if it's getting bigger, uh, will be advertisements. So you can think about billboards on our buildings uh, that we hang up and uh, start to uh, monetize on, on this part. <clears throat> and also at the first uh, now launch sale will be quite the big income of uh, launch sale. Also for the Metaverse as a service, we plan to, to have three to 5% of revenue participation uh, if you rent an off the shelf solution from us on, or if you have a tailor made solution in our world, uh, we will participate there uh, with the revenue. Tokenomics, we will make a fungible token to buy our land. So a fungible token to buy finally a non-fungible token. This is the land that you can claim on our map. You can go and draw there a polygon already working in a prototype uh, <clears throat> and use these tokens here then to buy your land. Uh, I don't want to go too much in details here. If you have questions, uh, come forward with it. Private round opportunity. So we are really looking for more partners and we are looking for private backers. So that's one road that we go down to raise money, uh, private backers, and then the public loan sale uh, in that is planned to happen in May. We also go down the other roads, that means equity-based. Uh, if you are interested in really a long-term partnership with us and uh, we are open to discussion, we would like to raise 1.6 million over the next, let's say half a year. Uh, to prevent the question that will come, how long is our, our 
landing, no road, road, roadway. You say uh, with this money is is uh, will be also around twelve months. Immediate need is here uh, to kickstart the land sale a bit with marketing campaigns. This is what we should have quite soon. We are uh, in the end phase of working with partners that uh, a big part of this money here uh, will be accepted by a marketing partner that uh, I cannot disclose yet uh, as, as token. But uh, if this works out, then this here will significantly drop. Uh, so the immediate pain of money uh, will go away. Operation roadmap. <clears throat> this is a very short time view now. I'm happy to uh, give you a, an overview also of, of a longer uh, timeline. We are currently uh, building up our community. Started two days ago, uh, growing, uh, growing fast and faster. Uh, we want to have a part of our metaverse accessible on our website. Important for us, people can go and watch and see. We are not selling land that is not existing. We are not selling a service that is not existing. We can go touch and feel. Then reaching uh, until May, a community size of 40K, maybe 50K, and then really start the land sale. Claude, I really don't want to interrupt you, but you yep. have 30 seconds to uh, continue, okay? No problem, uh, because I'm ending up at the team. So that's myself uh, having co-founders. And uh, we are quite a good prepared team. Uh, we have worked before with Xerox, with T-Systems and others. So we quite know what we are doing. Vision mission. We want to enable reliable, safe, fast, and cost-effective access for companies and businesses uh, in a high-quality metaverse, to keep it quite simple. And that's my closure. <laughs> Thanks Thank so you. Much. Yeah. Thank you, Claude. Uh, it was really good. And uh, yeah, you managed to do it simple presentation. A bit over time, I guess. I did not uh, a bit, stop watching. A bit. But that's OK. okay. Hopefully uh, acceptable. Thanks. And uh, I love your style. This, you know, typical Swiss German style of okay. Very, very uh, clear. Okay. Yeah, uh, I try to bring it on the point. Yes, of course. Perfect. <laughs> so let's see if uh, there are more questions left from investors' side. So Apostle, Belinda, Ken and Yasin from CDFI, Joe. Petro? Yeah, that one. Yeah, please I get go one. On. So uh, I realized that you know having you know the development of the metaverse usually costs a lot. So so if you share more about like usually like building, for example, a town or a city, like digital city like New York City, uh, like how long will you take and how much will it take will it cost? Okay, if we're uh, talking about metaverse services. Thank you. Yeah, maybe you did not get me uh, correctly. We have done already most of this. Uh, I don't want to say mm -hmm. we are at the end of everything. Of course, there's a lot of work to do, but we have things to go live with. So the pictures that you saw today is uh, all taken from our live metaverse that we have uh, in, as a prototype. And of course, we are eager to grow even more and uh, to have more. We are planning also to have a marketplace where uh, 3D designers and developers can put their their assets, if you want to call it like this, and uh, monetize them, uh, that people can go and choose them to put on their land that they bought. So, but quite a lot we already have out, uh, have out of, the, of the box. We are working together with Epic, so with Unreal, uh, and Epic is uh, quite strong in providing quite a lot of assets that you can use out of the box without going through the cumbersome uh, problem of designing them out, of, out from scratch. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Joe, for that question. Joe, do you have so, any follow-up? So, mm -hmm. so building this, you know, building to this current state, how long have you take? <laughs> how long it took for building all yeah. this? Mm -hmm. uh, with preparation and everything and with the team that is uh, uh, not 20 or 30 people. So we are around eight, eight people, uh, not all working full time. It took about a year to come at this point. A year. Yeah. Okay. That's impressive. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
happy to introduce you later on if you wish. Yasin? Yes, of course. Would cool. be great. Yes, thanks. <laughs> Uh, it's a little follow-up question, basically, on what was yeah. already asked by Joe. Um, so until now, was it like self-funded or is it money that you have already raised through VCs? You, you see, uh, there is the spelling about the triple F. I'm sure you know about it. Uh, it's family, friends and fools. We never, <laughs> we, we never searched for a fool. Uh, we don't need him. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a family business right now. It's all money from the family inside. And uh, we are in contact with uh, accelerators and with, with also uh, small VCs, business angels right now to, to close this first uh, gap that we have. So the first round, uh, but it's not yet, did not, it did not yet ha happen. Yeah, so we are open for that still. Okay, understood. Thanks a lot, Claude. Uh, another question regarding yes. the land sales. Um, so do you already have an approximate on how much you would like to raise through the land sales? Or that is, that yes. is very, yes, thank you for this question. That's very hard to uh, estimate. I know I, I have an insider in another metaverse business. So I cannot disclose the name, uh, but I know that they are creating around 100K land sale per month. Mm -hmm. And they don't even have the land. They are selling out of the blue sky. Uh, they don't have the technical approach. They don't have something to show. We have all this, and I'm quite sure we can replicate these numbers. Quite sure. Thanks a lot, Claude. Thank you. Joe, Yasin, I loved your questions a lot. Okay. I also have a quick question for you, um, Claude. Is yeah. that okay? Um, sure. Go ahead, John. So, um, yeah, so Chad from CD5, I've, I've tested a lot of metaverses, um, and I think you're your your points are, are on top like um really good points um and Actually, one of the, one of the main points is um low quality and very long uh loading times um how are you gonna how you will do this yes that's the next question <laughs> i'm as, sure like, about that a, yeah, yeah it's like a paradox right high quality but fast how, how do you do it it's it's not it's not uh you see there Actually, uh, just two approaches. You can either do client-side rendering or you can do server-side rendering. If you do client-side rendering, you need to uh, uh, transfer all this high-quality assets to the, to the client first, and then this client needs to be quite uh, high in power, uh, so have a good graphic card to, to render all this in high quality. But not everybody has, if you leave the, the gamer uh, aside a bit now. And this is why we do server-side rendering. So if you can watch a video on YouTube, on your device without uh, jumps or staggering, so without uh, interruption, then you will be able to use our uh, system because we are streaming an interactive video to your device. That's all the magic behind it. Thank you for the question. All right. Nice. Thank you, Claude. Really nice. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. And thank you, Claude. Um, yeah, we will follow up shortly with you. And uh, feel free to thank send you. us the links to your video that you also want to present to investors. We will yes. send it to sure. all investors together with the pitch deck and startup profile. Welcome. Thank you. Awesome. Please uh, stop your screen share. And uh, the last but not least uh, startup for today startup from Singapore, Social Fi Projects, Lead It, and the founder, Amit. Amit, are you ready? Amit? Cuckoo. Amit, no piggy. Hi. I, I hear you very slowly. It's a, Ami, A-M-I. Nice uh, meeting you Ami, sorry. Sorry for misspelling your name. Hello. So I'm Ami, Ami Berg. I was born in Israel and then I moved to the US and I'm a serial entrepreneur. I'm a product person. I created many, many successful products in my life. Uh, three of my life accomplishments, I became number one in the world in my category. And my latest uh, uh, endeavor before uh, getting into this crypto, uh, we're number one in the world, uh, IoT. Internet of Things, uh, GPS trackers. We number one best selling in Amazon, as well as we have partnership with Vodafone worldwide, uh, Nickelodeon, Paramount, Viacom. We currently invested four and a half million dollars in developing a special kids watch. This is the Nick watch with 
all sorts of characters. So I'm the big player. I'm creating big products. And I got into this, uh, decided to stay to be in the game of uh, crypto. Uh, first 2014, I, I got in and then got out. And 2017, I saw all the craziness going on. Then 2021, I decided I'm going to join the race. I'm going to stay behind. And uh, I came with this concept that uh, since I have a lot of experience in communities, in products, physical products, uh, video products, uh, community products, one of my successful endeavor to be a community of professionals, 11 million members. So I decided to create this uh, community that is rewarded by the token. And, uh, excuse uh, me, Ami, I don't want to interrupt you, of course, but will you share your presentation? Of course. Yeah, because I think it will be much more efficient and easy for investors to digest your information when they see some slides and uh, numbers. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. it. Do you see my screen now? Uh, yes, but <laughs> there are a lot of documents. So yes, okay. Maybe you can make it bigger because we see like half of the page. Yeah, right now it is better. Okay. Uh, sorry, I with all of this sharing, I have all of this navigation on the top for for uh, the Zoom. You got me not ready. I need to share it. To drop this thing well, down. I think you were informed in advance that uh, we are doing it with screen share, right? Yes, but mm -hmm. however, the uh, screen jumps in an unpredicted way. I, I, I can't get the navigation down from, from the top. I cannot move this thing down. Oh... Uh, Okay, get... let's try with this slide. Okay, keep this slide and go on. You have your five minutes. So please go on. I need to leave the screen here. Oh, it's terrible. Um... Give me a second, I'll, I'll relaunch it from another place. Um, because the, the navigation of Zoom is hiding my navigations. Okay, I'm trying to launch it in a different screen. Okay, here we go. So, uh, mm -hmm. LITIT is an honor uh, web tool for users to become Web3 users. We're enabling three Web3 and crypto mass adoption. Okay. Uh, there are many ways to look at Web3. Uh, uh, $47 billion have been invested in Web3 from 2021, 2022. A lot of unclear, undefined what is Web3. Uh, there's like 25 definitions in my world. Uh, Web3 is ownership economy, where the people are owning pies, piece of the action. Okay, uh, so what do we care is a social, uh, uh, social uh, microeconomy or social ecosystem whereby the ownership economy people are owning a piece of the action. Uh, for example, if you look at Facebook, you know their asset is community and content. The community is the eyeballs that they sell advertising to. The content is what brings the community to it. That's why web, uh, uh, entities like uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, were able to create this kind of wealth due to the income coming from the eyeballs. Uh, however, they're not rewarding these eyeballs, and they're not rewarding 99% of the creators. In our ecosystem, everybody's being rewarded for the time, either watching or generating content. Uh, uh, three months after we launched, we got already 300,000 users and creators who uploaded 1 million videos, okay? Uh, now, what's the problem? The problem is social all social networks are forcing users to watch ads without rewarding them. We are rewarding everyone. We also rewarding five times more for those who are watching ads. So they incentivize to watch ads. That means all three parties are winning, the advertiser, the, the viewer, and us, uh, because uh, otherwise it will skip the ads because they have no interest in watching the ads, now they incentivize. That means our revenue per, 
user is higher than others because of the incentivized. Number two, uh, all social networks do not reward small uh, influencers and do not reward developing countries. We reward everybody. Currently, there's no social web three that enable wide funnel. Okay, they're all very narrow funnels. Funnel is very complicated to get into web three. You need to start with wallets, with a whole bunch of confusing uh, concept, a lot of friction. Okay, and and the those who are not even uh, have an appetite to Web3 are not even interested in them. Uh, so we are uh, pretty much the only uh, platform out there that enabling Web2 to be converted to Web3 practically. It's not a white label. I mean, it's not a white paper. It's not an MVP. It's a mature program uh, product. It took hundred thousand programming hours. Okay, over a year and a half of development, it's mature, it's scalable for growth of 1 billion users. Okay, uh, currently we have a use, uh, use, proven use case whereby we're onboarding uh, users with very real friction because we're using the influencers, the powered influencers, because in our case, influencers are investing in themselves when they want to onboard their followers. And therefore they are motivated to get people onboarded. Uh, basically telling their followers, hey, if you want to earn from what I, my content, you better go to lit it. And at the same time, you like me, I'm a creator. You want to reward me by watching my videos, I'll be rewarded as well. So please go and read, you know, click the link on my profile and register. That's how we get mess, uh, mess uh, registration. So next problem, currently most play to earn, walk to earn uh, are Ponzi. Okay, actually the feds are investigating all of them. They require money, investment, and usually the, the winners are the founders and, and those who are for the quick, uh, you know, pump and dump and leave for the next uh, thing. The next thing, uh, most platform has a very expensive user exposition. Acquisition. Ours is very, very inexpensive. Problems with Web3 and socialized startups, okay? According to a, a, a Binance research from a month ago, the conclusion is currently Web3 cannot directly compete with Web2 social in terms of user experience and to succeed. They need to provide unique, innovative ways, utilities. This is what we do. Second conclusion, the currently lack of comprehensive tool chain that either migrate users into Web3 on a large scale or seamlessly integrate Web3 utilities into existing Web2 application. That's exactly what we do. Uh, uh, other articles are defining uh, people will realize, this is on uh, Cointelegraph, people realize that the way many have been thinking about community in Web3 is, excuse my BS, community is often simply a lovely word used to primarily describe a bunch of speculators on the Discord sharing common dream of rapid wealth who abandoned the project once the growth carousel stopped moving. Okay, so unlike all of these projects that basically kind of fade, lands, orbits, Rexter, they saw in others who got tens of millions of dollars invested in them, they basically uh, did not deliver on, on, on the expectations, uh, whereby we are very easily onboarding people. And now they're in the ecosystem. Now they're earning. Now they have to they think to, how to monetize it. How to monetize it? Need to have a wallet. How to have a wallet? We slowly embracing it to Web3. Also, most of the world is unbanked. Most developing countries, people don't have credit card, don't have bank account. We're creating an a, a, a ecosystem whereby people can exchange values using our utility token, which is utility token. Uh, we get to the utility in a minute. Uh, so this is a brief evolution. The internet came, people online, Google, uh, that into search, Facebook to social, Amazon to e-commerce, TikTok to short videos. We can't even cover everything, including social selling. And this is, by the way, where TikTok is going to compete with Amazon by selling through influencers. This is the direction we, okay. Interesting, uh, Web3 is growing about a uh, uh, thousand X, everybody knows. So we are a short video, an NFT, uh, and, and music. People, creators, both musicians and, and uh, video creators can earn from their creations on our platform. <clears throat> People can earn also by from creating video, watching video, inviting friends, it's the most they earn from inviting, uh, sharing the videos they can earn, uh, creating music, sharing music, and listening to music. We can earn from all of this. Currently, Live is a Lit It app. 
live, live matured, it, it's consistently growing with zero marketing. Uh, coming in the pipeline, which is 80% already uh, uh, created, need to be launched, is NFT marketplace, digital avatars, crypto wallet, and decentralized exchange. The growth we, we witnessed is a growth that you can see 100%, 68%, 12%, 30%, 5 as we were launching. Okay, Based on 10% of this kind of curve of, of growth, if you go all the way to 2020, then the next three years, we anticipate to have 2 billion users. Now, most uh, Web3 will say, oh, we are getting you ready to the next two, 3 billion users, but it's not going to be ever people jumping to, to 2 billion and 3 billion being three Web3. You have to onboard them through Web2, and this is what we do. And that's why us to getting a, a number of 2 billion is way more realistic than all of the other fantasies that, that Web3 are putting as a headline on the website, you know. Uh, tap into the next uh, 3 billion, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, uh, we're not intended to, to uh, compete with TikTok. They are completely different uh, uh, marketplace. But comparing one thing is officially time on app for TikTok is 19.6 minutes. Our time on app is one hour, three times longer. It means our app is more sticky. Okay, We actually won the number one best sticky app by by, by uh, by Eptopia, okay? Uh, we are more sticky than all other apps out there. Uh, we have a proof of traction about uh, half a year ago, there was $200,000 of liquidity and decentralized exchange. When this happened, we exploded with traffic, okay? People, we got hundreds and hundreds of videos coming over within a month of people on, on YouTube uh, showing testimony how they cash the two dollars, five dollars, twenty dollars, or lit it. Okay, comparing to the competition, anywhere between nine to half a billion invested in similar app like us, and none of them reached our numbers. Period. Fact. Okay. Uh, Honey, can you please just summarize what you wanted to say because sure. uh, we are out of time now. Sure. Uh, so we have built a lot of assets, 100,000 programming, uh, 320,000 registered users, 1 million videos, 13 billion video views. We have infrastructure scaled to 1 billion users. Uh, we created a lot of artificial intelligence to identify what people want. We have a KYC already built, fraud control, token security, life support. Okay, We have matchmaking artificial intelligence that develop uh, uh, Okay. Business model, uh, we wow. have a lot of income coming from utilities or utility of the token. Okay, uh, a lot of B two B services could pay for services on on the app, on the platform using the Lit Utility Token, as well as a lot of fiat income, including uh, uh, video ads, uh, scroll ads, uh, offer wall uh, surveys, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, yeah. some I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I have to make hard stop now because you are getting much over time and it will be unfair for other projects. So I um, encourage investors uh, to ask questions now and maybe let Army um, clarify the aspects that it, he didn't have time to do during his speech. Apostle Belinda can uh, Joe. Um, yeah, maybe it would be good to know, um, like, um, just how much you, you, you're planning to raise, et cetera, et cetera. That would be great. I'm mm -hmm. going to raise three million dollars, which will be used mostly for marketing, about one and a half marketing, 150 to continue the paying the overhead, uh, some more development, 650 uh, to listing and 350 for liquidity, but three million altogether. Nice. And, and have you launched your, your token already? The token was minted. It's a Solana base. However, we already have the bridge to be, have BNB, Polygon, and ETH. And because Solana was, you know, all the, all the, when we chose Solana was like 2021, when Solana was the highest, and now it's, it's a loser. So we we adapting very fast. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chad. Any other questions? Joe, do you have any questions? No, I'm good. 
Okay, yeah. thank you, Apostle Belinda. Not good. Oh, not from your side. Okay, uh, Yasin. Um, no, thank you. Okay, good. That seems that uh, you brought up a lot of numbers and information and uh, it's needed to be digest before going into questions. So as I mentioned already, we will share the DEX and startup profiles of all participating startups with investors here as priority. And tomorrow we will send it to all the investors in InMind Network. So, um, okay. dear, uh, yeah. Since there's no question, if I can add one more minute, if I may. Uh, uh, basically, yeah. basically keep, unlike uh, traditional crypto, but most of it has no asset behind it. We have community and content. It's very unusual implementation of crypto. It is an asset. The platform has its own income. We project that within six months will be profitable just by the income. So it's it's not like a pie in the sky, like most crypto project, you know, there's 5,000 metaverses, 5,000 pay to earn, you know, a lot of infrastructure we're going to serve, a failing with we are real, we're here to stay. It was funded by me. I invested my own $3 million in it. Okay. I didn't raise any penny. Okay. I'm, I'm the founder. I'm the product owner. I have created everything from A to Z. In other words, you're not going to be selling pressure for token because I'm not going to sell my token. And you can rest assured that the founder is never going to be abandoned the content, the, the, the project. You're never going to be abandoning his own uh, two, two years investment and $3 million. So that's a peace of mind for an investor that has a very committed founder. Thank you very much. Thank you for mentioning this, Ami. And uh, yeah, indeed, uh, the numbers that you brought up uh, sound very impressive and it seems that you already invested a lot of effort and funding uh, into these developments. So uh, right now you can stop your screen share and uh, I need to apologize since I promised you to be very dynamic and in time, not more than one hour and a half and we had uh, two hours today. <laughs> but I hope that it was uh, not the waste of time for anyone here. I know that some of the investors already want introductions with some of the founders from today. So it makes me very excited and uh, thinking of how many deals we will hopefully close uh, in the nearest future. So investors, please, please, please don't ignore our team when we will ask you for the feedback regarding founders and startups. And uh, don't hesitate to tell with whom do you want to follow up for the deal. And uh, founders, please uh, keep your in-mind startup profiles updated so that we do not need uh, to ask additional questions or search in the internet for your social profiles and other details uh, in order to feature you or to explain investors where they can find information for basic due diligence. And thanks again for everyone today. Um, I hoped that I will be able to ask additional questions for investors, but maybe for the next time about the market conditions and their sentiments. Uh, we are going to make a small report or research how investors feel about since uh, I, when I talk privately to the Caesar, um, I see that their private sentiments differ from those that are published uh, somewhere in the internet and discussed in uh, articles and media. I think it would be very interesting uh, to talk about it next time. But first of all, talking about deals, we will follow up this evening with all investors. Once we get feedback, we will follow up with founders. And uh, I saw a lot of questions in the live chat. Where can you get the pitch decks? Guys, you can get the pitch decks on InMind platform if you are verified investors or description of the startups in our Telegram channel. Thanks a lot to everyone. Some investors are from Asia, it's deep night already there. So thanks a lot guys for not sleeping and being with us and contributing with your smart questions and scouting for good startups for your portfolio. We will be happy to assist with your deal closure. And uh, take care everyone. Uh, thank you for today. Thank you for all your time. See you, bye-bye. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nelly. Thank you so Take much. Take care, guys. guys. Take care.